a big game for England uh, for those real professionals that will run out and that's Saturday <laughs> England take on Brazil remember it is live on Talk Sport all gets underway from 7 o'clock um, when you look at this England squad I, I was um, I was fascinated by a, a little piece that the England FA put out on their YouTube channel and it was basically inside training mm. I think a lot of the Premier League clubs are doing it now so you can get a bit more of an insight as to what these players do and we've got some I know this is obvious statement 101 here We've got some incredible footballers. This is the best collection like, of players this country's ever insane. produced. It's, it's unbelievable. And as I was watching these players come out, so you're watching Jude come out and Declan Rice. I mean, talk, like we're talking top mm. level here, top tier. I was thinking about some of the players that are not even in the squad, mm. like injured or won't get in. No, it's a very good way, like, actually, to judge the brilliance that's of this when squad. You know it's good. Yeah, the players, if you did the B team, if you did the players that aren't going to go to the tournament, yeah. it probably still is capable of reaching, what, a quarter final? Yeah, like Eberich Eze is not going. Eberich Eze will is, not is go. He's not going to no, go. James Will Prowse will not will go. Not go. I mean, Jaden Sancho, who I think now is starting to show signs of what he did a couple of years ago for Dortmund, will not go. No, there like, are no some. Chance. There are some sensational footballers that are nowhere near the England team. That's a great way to demonstrate quite how good we are. Another way, I think this really does tell the story. The best player currently playing in the Premier League, the best player currently playing in England, is English. The best player currently playing in Spain is English. The best player currently playing in Germany is English. The three major leagues in world football are all dominated by an Englishman, all in the same England team, all in different positions. That is how good this England team are. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's frightening. If you, if you look at it like that, it's top, really good. Like the top goal scorer in Germany playing is, is yeah. going to be playing for England. The top goal scorer in Spain is going to be playing for England. Six out of the top ten goal scorers in the Premier League are all English and all available for Gareth Southgate to select if he deemed them worthy. That is how good this England team are. A player like Ollie Watkins, you look at the form that he's been in, you look at the goal return, doesn't ever start for England. He probably will start on Saturday. Obviously, okay. Kane likely to, to not play uh, through injury and injury that he picked up playing for Bayern Munich. If it is the option of Watkins and Tony, do you think he's going to go 45 each just to make it peace for everyone in harmony? Or do you think he's going to give someone a real 70-minute run out here? No, I think it should be Ollie Watkins. I think Ollie Watkins deserves it. Playing for Agreed. England, the, the easy. I think it should be a really easy job for a manager. And Gareth Southgate has a really easy decision to make. It's a meritocracy. You earn the right. You earn the the no, place. But he's never done that though. He's never applied by those rules that you're saying because if he has when they suit him, no, when they suit him, he has. No, he's used it when it suits <laughs> yeah, him, yeah, and when then they suit he's obviously him. forgot he said it when it doesn't. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's like playing out of position. That's that's something that certain players can do. Certain players can't do. You playing for England when you're not playing for your club. That's certain. That's something that certain players can do, and certain players can't. But with regard to playing up front, I think it should be really easy to actually dictate who starts for England. No, no, no. But it's a case of. See, this is where we kind of get it wrong, don't we? Because we just look at, okay, who is the next best? Where it comes on, okay, who suits the players that are still playing in that? The other 10. Who Ollie, suits Ollie Watkins has been phenomenal for us. Who's Villa more like Harry Kane? Ollie Watkins or Ivan Tony, so you don't have to juggle too much. Do you know what I mean? Remember when United did this, where they, I think, who, who's Hoyland was out, and they kind of then juggled like three or four and different and Bruno players. Bruno Fernandes ended up playing three yeah, there Yeah, there you go. Point, so who, who's more like Harry Kane, so everyone else... But I don't think that's a fair put. comparison. Well, like, that's we, the way it is. No, but you're asking me a loaded question, one that I don't want to answer, because that doesn't <laughs> suit my point. Yeah. The, the, the question that I would like to answer is, who deserves an opportunity to play for England? And, and in terms of the meritocracy, in terms of earning the right... Ollie Watkins deserves his head and shoulders above Ivan Tony. Yeah. Ivan Tony has become this sort of hipster's choice. He's become this fashionista of football. And I don't really understand it. When he's out, he suddenly becomes a far better player than he ever was when he was playing. Mm. He became the answer to everyone's problems. Chelsea is struggling. You've got to sign Ivan Tony. Arsenal need to need to replenish their forward line. They need to sign Ivan, Ivan Tony. Brentford are going to go down if they don't keep Ivan Tony. Everything Wait, is one about second, Ivan Tony. One second, before you start to get in a bit of a hump here. So should he not have been in the squad? Ivan Tony probably... I don't... I don't Do have any strong maybe feelings. Dominic he, he, Solanke he, should have been or something. He probably wouldn't have been in my squad, Ivan Tony. But I would say, I would say that I don't mind him being in and around the, the squad. Mm. But I don't think he's anywhere near second choice striker. Okay, uh, Jordan Henderson looks like he's a doubt for this one. Again, a, another player that I think a lot of people think shouldn't have been in the squad. Obviously, hasn't lifted up trees since moving to Ajax from Saudi Arabia. L let's be honest, he isn't the same Jordan Henderson he was a couple of years ago for Liverpool. If he doesn't start, and it looks like he isn't going to be out, who do you think comes in to that midfield, almost, I, I guess, number eight role that he's vacated? It's going to be Jude and Declan. They'll both start, obviously, two world-class midfielders. Who is now the third choice? It's a fantastic situation that this England side are in because apart from this debate, a couple of other debates, maybe you and I at some point could explore the goalkeeping situation. We could explore who plays centre-half alongside John Stones and then this one, the central midfield berth. Who partners... Uh, Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice who plays in that third spot they are the only flaws they are the only issues with this England team OK it wait to answer it how what numbers because this is what we do now and it's 6, 8, 10s mm. 
What's a Jude and what's a Declan Rice? Uh, Jude Bellingham this season has created a new position in football, hasn't he? He's played as a sort of ten and a half. He's, he's found done, a, what he, done what he wants. He's basically. found a new position. Mm. He's he's he plays so far forward that it's almost it's almost diff- difficult for him. Mm. But I think that it would be foolish of Gareth Southgate to ask Jude Bellingham to do stuff that he hasn't been doing for Real Madrid. So I think you allow Jude Bellingham to play as a very forward-thinking central midfielder. I think Declan Rice has become your archetypal box-to-box midfielder, hasn't he? Yeah. He has become a £100 million bargain. He looks like a flawless midfielder. I can't really think of a flaw in his game. It's all very well to talk about what he's good at. I can't really think of what he's not good at. Someone's going to have a chance to almost state a claim for a starting position when it comes to the Euros kicking off. Who's it going to be? Who do you think gets that third spot? For me, the midfield should be as simple as this. I think it should be Declan Rice with Jude Bellingham and Kobe Maynard. Oh, young Kobe Maynard. Yeah, I think it should be. I Not, think that we I should. Thought you, I thought he was going to say Conor Gallagher, so that's interesting. No, no. Why Kobe? I think I think Kobe Maino, partly because he plays the position that we so desperately need. Mm. You know, there is there is a world where Kobe Maino wouldn't get anywhere near this team if a player was having the performances that Kobe Maino is having, but playing in virtually any other position on the pitch, he wouldn't get near the team. But Kobe Maino happens to do the job that England are so desperate for. He is the answer to that problem. He is realistically the only player that is an expert. In that position, can you be too young, inexperienced? No, no you certainly can't. Eighteen. He's no. only played. He's only played a few games for United. Addy, if you're if you're good enough, you are old enough. We should have learnt this from yeah, when my fair. when when Michael Owen burst onto the scene and, and took the ball around Mauricio Pochettino, pushing Paul Scholes out of the way and blazing it into the top corner in Saint Etienne. We should have learnt this when Wayne Rooney, Rooney yeah. scored those two goals against Croatia. We should have learnt this then. If you are good enough, you're old enough. And it's very important to remember that Kobe Maino... But that's a different is, type of a position, isn't it? That midfield position is completely different from a forward position. From everything that we've seen in, in Kobe Maino, does, he look, does he look need. capable to you? No, no, no. I've, does I've, he look mature I've likened to you? him to Seydorf and I got kind of, you know, missiles thrown at me for it. I think he's very calm Rio, and Rio relaxed. Rio Ferdinand said the same thing. He may have listened to you he's and copied listened, you. He's nicked, he's nicked Rio, it, I heard Rio Ferdinand Just say exactly own the same it, thing. Rio, at least give me my plaudits. Yeah, Rio, if yeah. you're going to nick stuff from Adi Oladipo, at least cite him because yeah, he didn't he didn't mention you at all. No, the Kobe, the, the Claret Seydorf thing seems to be... Uh, Regularly said on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.